Hello and welcome back. And from everybody here at the Nerd Theorists, we can say a happy Avatar Day, where the Avatar was not boiled in oil, where he's actually alive and well in the Netflix's new live uh, Avatar The Last Airbender series. Now, stick around to find out what my initial reaction is to the first three episodes. Julie, do the thing. Right, so, first things first, I apologise for the nasty noise that my PC is making that's being picked up on the mic, which it probably is. It's high on my to-do list to sort that out, but please bear with me. Secondly, yes, I am only going through the first three episodes, but if you haven't seen the original um, animation or these first three episodes, it is going to be chocker full of spoilers, so you have been warned. But otherwise... Let's get down to my reaction. So, initially, my first reaction is that it is beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. It looks and feels exactly like the original Avatar series. It's beautiful. All the casting is mwah, perfection. And there's always going to be changes in the way that these stories are told whenever there's a, a live adaptation of an animation or computer game or anything like that there's always going to be some kind of storyline changes they can't do it word for word episode for episode it's impossible you just can't do it so that's always going to anger some of the hardcore fans which are just go no they've changed this they've changed that there's it's always going to be changes. We, we've accepted this. Well, I have at the very least. So in some of the subtle ways that they've kind of changed uh, the, the storytelling of it, um, the, from the get-go, it started off introducing you to Aang straight away. And like in um, the 100 years ago in the past, being trained, being taught by the Air Nomads, and then him uh, running away from his duties... And being frozen in ice as as we were expecting and then skipping forward in time so you don't have that kind of um going back and that storytelling element that way it's just so much easier and to be fair i don't think I've lost anything from doing that but there's lots of little bits of things so the first episode wonderful um everything down to um, the sh the Fire Nation ship stuck in the ice, the way that the Southern Water Tribe looks. Um, so it was all fantastic. And going through this episode goes through uh, what is effectively the first three episodes of the animation. It goes through the discovery of Aang. It goes through um, the Zuko's discovery of... Um, the avatar at the, at the southern water tribe just purely by accident could call it fate destiny even but whatever you you want to do it um was really well worked and it then goes on to um ang's then willingness to hand himself over um then his escape and katara is wanting to learn his the her water bending Still going on. This is all exactly, pretty much exactly the same as as it was. Um, but then going on to Ang or um, the the gang, the Ang gang, going on to the um, Southern Air Temple where Ang uh, was raised and trained. But he um, that wasn't until after. That wasn't in the first episode um, which of, of the animation, which the animations are only 20 minutes long. They're going to have to cram them into episodes. It was always going to happen. And it was all brilliant. It was all wonderful. And the you get to actually see a lot of the Fire Nation attack on the, um, the, the air temples, or at least on that air temple. It did feel a little bit of a... Um, storytellers um 
it seemed very easy for him to just say, oh yeah, we were having a celebration. We've invited all the air nomads um, to our one temple where they just all get wiped out. Just seemed a little easy for storytelling, especially because they were all there celebrating the comet. Which is like, mm, which, which if you don't know, Sozin's comet actually makes all firebenders more powerful. Spoiler. Did warn you. But, so... Not only were the airbenders celebrating uh, very much a Fire Nation aspect, but they were then, in doing so, they all gathered in one place. It just seemed very convenient for storytelling. Um, but that's it. That was my only qualm with it at all. I mean, it was. I loved it. It was beautiful. And all, as, as I've said before, the casting is amazing. I mean, you could quite easily go through it and go that's precisely that scene it is perfect it is exact and yeah, the, it was just so good and i'm going to keep saying it's so good and so beautiful because it exact it was that it was exactly that so episode two called warriors this was clearly going to be the kiyoshi warriors which is such a wonderful part of the uh, Avatar lore and legends, because Kyoshi Island was a wonderful, small little place which still held on to the core traditions of Avatar Kyoshi, and training um, their Kyoshi warriors in her style and image, and one of which was uh, Suki, um, who, when they do meet, is again perfect casting. So. Aang and the gang all go there in aid of trying to discover Aang's past and trying to discover how he can become the Avatar and also control his Avatar state. And on the flip side of that, Zuko um, goes and in search of information about where he could find Aang. But in doing so, he accidentally tips off General Chow to where he could find uh, the fact that he was on the trail of the Avatar. And it was actually General Chow who um, goes off and um, chases him. It's only because Zuko then follows um, the um, General all the way there um, to Kyoshi Island, where there is a big conflict. Um, uh, Chow and his men and the um, Kyoshi warriors have a wonderful, wonderful fight. Um, which, to be fair, I'm a little bit surprised there wasn't more civilian civilian casualties, but I suppose they are trying to keep it a little more in line with the um, animation and not make it a little bit more gritty uh, of, of realism to it. But still, it was still a wonderful, wonderful fight scene. And... Uh, but before that kind of all kicks off, in the animation, um, it was a key part of uh, Soka's development for him to go from this um, kind of very sexist uh, youngster to then having his uh, ass handed to him by Suki and the other Kyoshi warriors to then start to respect um, women as a role of a warrior. And he then swallows his pride and asks to be trained by Suki, which it it happens exactly in this. Because I know on the run up to this all happening, uh, I know they did say that they were toning down Sokka's uh, sexism uh, and not going, oh, women belong in the kitchen and all the healers, this, that, and the other, um, which is fine. I mean, why why would you want it to be more sexist? Seriously, you need to look at yourself because. In itself, what I've seen, especially on Kyoshi Island, it hasn't lost any of that. He was very brash and all that bravado, going, I'm man, I'm the warrior. And he still gets his ass handed to him, and he still has to swallow his pride to then admit, yes, you're a better warrior than me, please train me. And it hasn't lost any of that. And it is really, really good. And it's brilliantly done. To the point where, when they are... The Kyoshi warriors are fighting. Sokka is fighting alongside them, and they learn to respect each other, rather than Sokka just being this bumbling fool who um, is just there for the comic relief. I mean, he, he shows himself to actually be able to stand up to Fire Nation warriors, 
which is brilliant. I know it might be a little bit quick, but he does have a bit of a montage with um, Suki as for training, so we can kind of forgive him a little bit for that. But also, in meanwhile, Aang is then meditating at um, Kyoshi's shrine, where he does manage to contact the spirit of Kyoshi within him and able to contact them, and in doing so, um, Kyoshi kind of takes Aang's body for a little ride, completely overtakes him and everybody instantly in awe or f dread of upon seeing Avatar Kyoshi effectively back from the dead. It's such an amazing scene and brings a massive, massive smile to my face, as you can see. It is done brilliantly and in doing so saves the island once again and restores um, all of the um, people of the Kyoshi Island to wanting to not necessarily open up quite so quickly, but they're at least more um, open to the the prospects of, of outside world and maybe getting involved in the war, at the very least um, Suki is. And yeah, and the Fire Nation goes with their tail between their legs, and it's a wonderful, wonderful episode. Again, in my opinion, not a foot out of place. Brilliant, brilliant episode. So, on to episode three. Now, this is where a lot of the uh, big changes in the way the storytelling is coming in. You can see that a lot in this episode. So... This is called uh, Omashu. So, just from the beginning of that, everybody who knows is the uh, Earth Bend or the Earth Nation's city of Omashu. Now, this um, is uh, famously the um, place of King Bumi, uh, the Mad King. But you don't really get to see much of him in this particular episode. I'm pretty sure we're going to see more of him in future episodes, which I've not yet seen. But we um also get to see jet and um Cy the mechanist which you do not get to see in uh omashu at least um not at this stage you do meet him in one of the uh, air temples um as cause they appeared as um him and lots of others there it wasn't just um the mechanist and his son um as it is in in omashu but in, in saying that, uh, you know, um, these changes are always going to have to be made. So they've kind of cut, it looks like they're going to cut out a lot of the, the other air temples. Um, at least not visiting them all, I should imagine. So at least cutting out the the one that, that the mechanist was in, in, in the original series. Um, so in this one, he's working for King Boomy. Uh, in trying to um, create things to be able to fight against the uh, uh, Fire Nation. Uh, in, in, in this, he says he's accredited with um, inventing the um, the mail system with the um, moving um, trays and the slides and things, um, which we all love that. It's very much um, a key hallmark of the image of Omar Shu. Um a jet is in this and with his usual very questionable tactics of fighting the fire nation with absolutely no regard for civilian innocent casualties especially earth nation casualties um because he's trying to root out traitors within um the earth kingdom and in doing so is killing a lot of people using bombs now even though him and his um group are very formidable and are doing a good job in actually fighting against um, Fire Nation soldiers and spies when they actually do meet up with them, um, blowing up so-called meeting points for, or at least suspected meeting points of um, Fire Nation spies is, is a bit of a harsh way of going about it. But it all kind of comes to a head when he comes to the conclusion that the mechanist was actually uh, a spy for the fire nation 
and it then actually plans on blowing him up as he's going to meet King Boomy with one of his airship designs, which, again, spoiler alert, the Fire Nation do get their hands on. We're, but, um, yeah, he they just about to actually get blown up. Just You get to see King Boomy even just for the slightest of moments as he's about to hand in the, the, the plans of the model. Um, but really it's just a load of blasting jelly um, and but then um, Katara actually bringing her water bending to the foray because she's been training, training a lot especially in this uh, last couple of episodes she managed to actually master that one move she's been trying to get for a while now and actually manage it actually thanks to Jet and some of the words that he's been saying So he has his moments, don't get us wrong he does have his moments but it's just his tactics are questionable. But she saves everybody. And hey, everybody's alive. But Jet seems to have gotten away. And Jet now has the model and the plans for the airship. We're going to assume that then those plans get into the hands of the Fire Nation through Jet and his group. Which, rather than finding one of um, the Mechanist's completed models for, in the... Um, and uh, nations um, where they kind of set up. So yes, a lot of things had changed, um, but then um, Zuko and the Dragon of the West, Iro himself, um, goes into Omashu to try and find and confront the Avatar, which they do, and they manage to do it. Well, at least um, Zuko. Um, has a his own fight with them um but only then to only be able to escape because iro allows himself to be chased um assumedly captured though you don't actually get to see that but he shows himself to be the firebender and all the guards chase him allowing zuko to escape but one of the other key things as was it's not key for the storyline but key for all those old fans is Cabbage guy, as soon as you go to any Earth Nation um, uh, city, town or anything, you expect to have the cabbage guy, my cabbages, which in this you see him and it's got the same, the guy playing it in live action who's voiced it in the original series as well, which is just wonderful. He, um, right from the get go, you think he's going to say it, but he doesn't. And then you see him again, you think he's going to say it and he doesn't, but then right at the end as soon as he says it everybody in the room will go hey my cabbages <laughs> he's just wonderful we loved that moment and i'm sure everybody else did too all in all yes there are big changes to the way the storyline is being told in this episode and it shows that those changes itself is going to have to change how the storyline tends to go from here uh, in certain kind of subtle ways but I don't think it's going to be a detriment to the overall storyline. I really don't. I know a lot of people are very much a, no, but they have to do it this way, they have to do it that way. They don't. They really don't have to. It's great. It's really good. And if anybody who is watching this who doesn't know the original will thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. And anybody who does know the original and is all very angsty about it chill out enjoy yourself just relax enjoy it because it is good television it's great and it's more avatar and certainly has damn sight better than that last unspeakable version which we'll never talk of again so all in all my i absolutely love it um it's, it's it's really good and I cannot wait to get stuck in and watch the rest of them so in the next kind of installment of my reactions I'm going to do the next three episodes again so give us a like a subscribe stick around to watch that because we are on the uh, growing channels every subscription and a like is a massive help to us so thank you very much and also, your thoughts are very much welcome, so leave us a comment down below, and I will respond to them as soon as I can. So, until next time, stay nerdy.